Peace and blessings. What's up? This is Unplug em. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. We're breaking down the dynamic of blacks and reptilians, the black Masonic Illuminati connection, and the checkerboard game. What we're talking about is a game, much like the game played on this pool table I'm sitting on here. But this game is played on a grand checkerboard, chessboard, black and white, where the black Masonic elite and the white Masonic elite, uh, the Illuminati of both sides, are played against each other. Both ends played against the middle. And who's controlling the black side and the white side? Who's actually sitting there playing the game? Well, we find that it is indeed the source of the light, Lucifer, who has not only controlled the white Masonic Illuminati agenda for thousands of years, but now that we are in these end times and we are midway through the beginning of tribulation, the, the beginning of sorrows, uh, now that we're here, we're seeing the ball being passed to the black side. The black Masonic elite are now in prominence. And this is why you see Obama as the president. He represents a joining together of the black and white sides. He is related to six U.S. presidents, General Grant, Ulysses S. Grant, and Winston Churchill. This is by no coincidence. This is because we're talking about a bloodline that goes back for centuries, all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 in your Bible. Uh, when it talks about the serpent being more subtle. Subtlety is something that an intelligent being has. And in some books it will say cunning. And cunning is something that deals with intelligence. So we're talking about an intelligent being. It also tells us, uh, as the Lord gives the curse of, uh, to Eve and the curse to the serpent, uh, in Genesis 3, 13 and 14, the Lord punishes the serpent and causes it to now crawl upon its belly, whereas before it was not. It was speaking. Now, one thing that's uh, dubious and should raise a question is, what is a serpent? We've been raised through um, mostly Masonic artists' pictures to believe that it's a snake. We've seen pictures and paintings, mostly old paintings by guys that are a part of the Brotherhood, you know, in one leg or, or another, Da Vinci is probably a scion. So in one respect or another, especially during the, the Renaissance era, you had a lot of uh, painting going on to bring forth this knowledge of, of Lucifer and to disguise other things that Lucifer did not want the masses to know and understand. And had there been an actual snake being standing there talking to Eve in those paintings and photographs, then a lot of this mystery would not have uh, prevailed as long as it has. But Jesus said all things under the darkness shall be brought to the light and nothing is uh, hidden except that it shall be disclosed. And uh, the Bible says that it is the glory of God to conceal the matter and the glory of kings to reveal it. So right now we're going to reveal uh, just exactly what that serpent being and the black Masonic agenda have to do with one another and how it connects to uh, ghetto, ghetto capitals like Detroit and Atlanta, uh, where the music scene is now based. Manly P. Hall is one of the most respected writers and Masonic philosophers in history. And Manly P. Hall talks about the Masonic great work, which is the eventual creation of this great society uh, with Lucifer as king. Uh, however, he, he names this society after an ancient society that is supposed to be built like. And that ancient society is called Atlantis. Atlantis, ladies and gentlemen, I maintain, was a reptilian society based in the water. And these water beings, these water spirits, are the same beings that came to the Dogon tribe and taught the Dogon tribe in Mali, West Africa, about uh, the position of stars, Sirius A and B. These stars is where the reptilian beings say that they come from. They told these Dogon tribe members, this primitive tribe that did not know of reading and writing and mathematics and astronomy in the conventional sense, but had some supernatural understanding of the stars, uh, that the 
Western understanding did not yet have. And it wasn't until years later when Western uh, missionaries came down there and tried to convert the Dogon, the Dogon told them, oh, we already have a God. Our God is the, the, the grotesque one, the fish-headed God. And he comes from out there. And they drew diagrams in the sand. And they drew diagrams for the uh, Europeans who were there to show them where these stars were. And these Europeans had not yet discovered these stars. And it's serious, ladies and gentlemen, Serious Radio, uh, Serious A and B, uh, Serious A is known as the dog star. This is where you get um, the black colloquialism of calling each other dog. It's a big thing in Detroit since I was in elementary school. People call it, you know, brothers and sisters, brothers call each other instead of bro, but dude, dog. And then on the East Coast, you had a big uh, phenomenon, largely because of the presence of the 5% nation, which was largely guided by black Masonic teachings, low-key, through Clarence 13X and the like. Um, they called each other God, which is the backward, the reverse of dog. So even the Dogon tribe in its name, backward, Dogon is no God. Okay, The Dogon king was Numos, which backward is summoned. Okay, so you see this forward-backward dynamic always going on because the devil is about dividing and conquering, and, but he's also about reversing that which God has done. So this is where you get the backward masking and the music, putting things backward um, on the clothes, symbols, and whatnot, the, the backward thing, even the crisscross uh, phenomenon. I believe crisscross was from Atlanta. Um, but Atlantis <coughs> and Atlanta and the black music, connection, the black music dynamic that was once uh, based in Motown, in the Motor City, the Renaissance City, is now based in Atlanta. Atlanta radio can uh, go hours by playing predominantly Atlanta and Southern artists. The force and the energy down south is different. You have more nature surrounding you, uh, bigger, clearer skies that are harder to chemtrail, less compact, uh, more water which is spirit. And so the energy down here is more important in these last days. And it had to be moved down here um, to New Atlantis. Okay? So this uh, dynamic, this black Masonic dynamic, is big here. You have the presence of Dr. Malachi V. York uh, in Edenton, Georgia, not far from Atlanta, but his stores are all throughout Atlanta. The all eyes on on Egypt stores. Um, there, there's one in Detroit on Livermore. Uh But down here, you know, I've, I've I've just been riding around here and there, seeing different places that obviously have the mark of Dr. York. But it's bigger than Dr. York. Dr. York was just a Masonic facilitator. He was to help to indoctrinate the superconscious and the hip hop generation into Masonic teachings, low key. And he taught us that people that we now, you know, know were reptilian and the Anunnaki, the Nephilim, the fallen ones mentioned in uh, 322. Uh, we now know that, you know, those same people he taught us were ancestors were actually the reptilian enemy. So this shows and proves the black Masonic agenda just through York himself. How Crawlian was York? Didn't he get caught transporting children across state lines and, and taking them to the Epcot Center? For those of you who are not aware who Dr. York is, um, if you're black and conscious, you're not digging deep enough because you would have bumped into him by now. And, and if you're not black and conscious, among the um, Egyptomania that you find in conscious and educated black folks, you have those who really take it to that other level, and they usually end up uh, under Dr. York's teachings, which are now called Nuwapu. There are a lot of beautiful Nuwapians uh, whom I call family and friends and loved ones, okay? So let's not get that twisted. But like there are a lot of beautiful Christians who have been deceived. Uh, the, the devil works deception on every group that he fears, and he fears the super conscious black brother or sister. He fears the one that wants to get into their history and have knowledge of self and not be a, um, a dragon but be civilized. 
So because of that fear, he has to infiltrate us, most importantly, the, the conscious black, the intelligent black, who does not want to join those secret societies, has to somehow be indoctrinated anyway. And that's what Dr. York was used for, I hate to tell you. So we're going to come back with one more part. Peace and blessings. Unplug them. I'm out. <laughs>